Leviticus chapter 4. <clears throat> and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a soul shall sin through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord, concerning things which ought not to be done, and shall do against any of them, if the priest that is anointed do sin according to the sin of the people, then let him bring for his sin, which he hath sinned, the young bullock without blemish unto the Lord for a sin offering. And he shall bring the bullock unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord, and shall lay his hand upon the bullock's head, and kill the bullock before the Lord. And the priest that is anointed shall take of the bullock's blood, and bring it to the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall dip his finger in the blood, and sprinkle of the blood seven times before the Lord, before the veil of the sanctuary. And the priest shall put some of the blood upon the horns of the altar of sweet incense before the Lord, which is in the tabernacle of the congregation, and shall pour all the blood of the bullock at the bottom of the altar of the burnt offering, which is at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he shall take off from it all the fat of the bullock for the sin offering, the fat that covereth the inwards, and all the fat that is upon the inwards, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is upon them, which is by the flanks, and the call above the liver with the kidneys, it shall he take away. As it was taken off from the bullock of the sacrifice of peace offerings, and the priest shall burn them upon the altar of burnt offering. And the skin of the bullock, and all his flesh, with his head, and with his legs, and his inwards, and his dung, even the whole bullock shall he carry forth without the camp unto a clean place, where the ashes are poured out, and burn him on the wood with fire, where the ashes are poured out, shall he be burnt. And if the whole congregation of Israel sin through ignorance, and the thing be hid from the eyes of the assembly, and they have done somewhat against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which should not have not be done, and are guilty, when the sin which they have sinned against it is known, then the congregation shall offer a young bullock for the sin, and bring him before the tabernacle of the congregation. And the elders of the congregation shall lay their hands upon the head of the bullock before the Lord, and the bullock shall be killed before the Lord. And the priest that is anointed shall bring of the bullock's blood to the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall dip his finger in some of the blood and sprinkle it seven times before the Lord, even before the veil. And he shall put some of the blood upon the horns of the altar, which is before the Lord, that is in the tabernacle of the congregation, and shall pour out all the blood at the bottom of the altar of the burnt offering which is at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he shall take all his fat from him and burn it upon the altar. And he shall do with the bullock as he did with the bullock for a sin offering. So shall he do with this. And the priest shall make an atonement for them, and it shall be forgiven him. And he shall carry forth the bullock without the camp and burn him as he burned the first bullock. It is a sin offering for the congregation. When a ruler hath sinned and done somewhat through ignorance, against any of the commandments of the Lord his God, concerning things which should not be done, and is guilty. Or if his sin, wherein he hath sinned, come to his knowledge, he shall bring his offering, a kid of the goats, a male without blemish, and he shall lay his hand upon the head of the goat, and kill it in the place where they killed burnt offering, before the Lord, it is a sin offering. And the priest shall take of the blood of the sin offering with his finger, and put it upon the horns of the altar of burnt offering, and shall pour out his blood at the bottom of the altar of burnt offering. And he shall burn all his fat upon the altar, as the fat of the sacrifice of peace offerings. And the priest shall make an atonement for him according sorry. And the priest shall make an atonement for him as concerning his sin, and it shall be forgiven him. And if any one of the common people sins for ignorance, while he doeth somewhat against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done, and be guilty, or if he sin which he hath sinned come to his knowledge, then he shall bring his offering, a kid of the goats, a female without blemish, for his sin which he hath sinned. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of the sin offering, and slay the sin offering in the place of the burnt offering. And the priest shall take of the blood thereof with his finger, and put it upon the horns of the altar of burnt offering, and shall pour out all the blood thereof at the bottom of the altar. And he shall take away all the fat thereof, as the fat is taken away from the sacrifice of peace offerings. And the priest shall burn it upon the altar for a sweet savor unto the Lord. And the priest shall make an atonement for him, and it shall be forgiven him. And if he bring a lamb for a sin offering, he shall bring it a female without blemish. 
And he shall lay his hand upon the head of the sin offering and slay it for a sin offering in the place where they kill the burnt offering. And the priest shall take of the blood of the sin offering with his finger and put it upon the horns of the altar of burnt offering and shall pour out the blood thereof at the bottom of the altar. And he shall take away all the fat thereof as the fat of the lamb is taken away for the sacrifice of the peace offerings. And the priest shall burn them upon the altar according to the offering made by fire unto the Lord. And the priest shall make an atonement for his sin that he hath committed, and it shall be forgiven him. Hi, this is one of those chapters where there is a huge amount of symbolism involved in all of this. So, understand that the blood is in symbol, symbolic value of the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. And so this is to try to get them to understand all that. It talks about if somebody sins or if the chief priest or some leader sins in ignorance. And what does that mean? It means that if, even though you and I may say that we didn't understand or we didn't know that what we were doing was wrong, or we didn't appreciate what the consequences would be. The problem is that it is still a sin to God, and it still has to be dealt with because, whether it was intentional or otherwise, it is still a barrier between us and Heavenly Father. And it has to be dealt with somehow. And so whether it's intentional or otherwise, it still needs to be dealt with. And so Israel might not have paid any attention to it, but Heavenly Father had to, and this is how, this is how it had to be dealt with. Now, the symbol, symbolism of sprinkling the blood seven times before uh, the sanctuary, seven was the Hebrew uh, idea symbol of completeness or wholeness. It was part of how their number system worked. And so... If they sprinkle it seven times, that was considered to be uh, a whole offering of the blood. Putting it on the horns of the altar of sweet incense was symbolic of prayer on behalf of the people. Those horns were symbolic of prayer and also a power, power of prayer. They burned the fat of the bullock, and that was all the and the fat on the inside and the fat on the uh, kidneys and everything else and that was symbolic of the goodness of the animal and the, the good intentions of the people and all the rest of the animal was taken outside and burned outside where they dumped the ashes and that had symbolism for them of because it was a sin because it represented the animal represented sin not an offering of righteousness not an offering of something that was really good because there was sin involved in the offering. It was not allowed to be offered on the altar. Just as so individuals who had sinned, for instance, later on, were not allowed to go into the tabernacle or were not allowed to go into the temple because they had sinned until the sin had been dealt with. And that was part of the problem that needed to be done. People needed to, to know that if they were ritually unclean, whether they... And they, they had baths, they had sacrifices, they had all of this. And because the people as a group, you got two million people, you're going to have some people who are going to be perfectly righteous the vast majority of the time, and you're going to have some people who are going to be virtually sin, sinners virtually all the time. And so they had these ongoing sacrifices for sin, and they had big ones. I mean, the bullock was as big as you got. And there, if it was for a high, if it was for the uh, the priest, then that was as big as you got. And the reason was that, you know, it's, it's like a watch. If you have a, a a watch in town, if you have a clock in town, and everybody goes by the clock, and the clock's out of out of time, then everybody who pays attention to that is obviously going to be operating on the wrong standard. Whereas if you've got a watch and your watch is out, it's just you. So Heavenly Father wants people to understand that if you if you're a leader. And you step out of line, you're going to take a lot of people with you. Whereas if you are just an individual, you might be able to make a payment for the sin, an offering for the sin that was more in tune with just one person 
rather than the necessity of doing something great as happened to the high priest or the king or the ruler. That's part of what all this was all about. 